Hello friends, welcome to the course of Codeigniter for RESTful API development using Silt Authentication. So finally, from this video, we are going to start all about our API development processes. So first we chosen all about Create Register API. By the help of that, we'll create users and save inside our database. Back to editor. Inside the last video, successfully we had set up all about our API routes. Now this time, we will start on our register API method. So by the help of this register method, we will create some users and we will save inside our database. So to work with this method, we have some steps. Let's remove this single line comment. So first, while working with this method, we need to pass form data. So inside data, we will have like username, email and password. So once we get all the data inside this method, we need to apply validation. Once all the data will pass validation, then we need to work with user model, model and entity object. And finally, by the help of these two concepts, then we'll save data to database. So finally, these are the steps we need to follow to work with this register method. So let's start step by step. So I will remove those here. First, we need to prepare our validation rules. So rules. And here, so we will receive username. So let's say username. Next, we'll have call our email address and then password. So the first rule which is applicable for all these three fields and that will be required. Let's copy this rule, paste with this email address and password. Now the next rule we need for this username as well as for email that is uniqueness. So for the uniqueness of values is unique a validation rule available inside Code Igniter which provides the uniqueness of value throughout the application. So username value will be compared if I go inside our database. So this is our database. Username will be compared with the users table and from this users table go to structure. Here as you can see we have the column name as username. So whenever we insert any new user Username will be compared and will check from this column value. Go here. Is unique. It will be from users table and from users table, users table and this is our column name. So I will copy and paste it here. So table name dot column name. Next in the same pattern we need to apply this uniqueness property with this email address as well. But something is different here. If I go inside our database, go back to our database. So here as we can see, we have one more table called auth identities. If I click on that table. So inside this table, we can see here we have the columns. So from these columns, here we have a secret. And this secret column is going to contain store our email address value. So whenever we create and save user inside these tables of silt authentication tables, this column will take the email address value. So email address should be unique throughout the column throughout the database of this column value. So we need to use auth identities as the table name dot secret as a column name. Go here. Let's add a pipe symbol. So is unique. We need to first pass the table name that is auth identities dot and from this table we need to use our secret column. So I will copy and paste it here. So all we have done now the uniqueness of username and email address. So successfully now we have created all the validation rules. And sorry here we need to add one more rule inside this email address and let's add a pipe here and that will be for valid email. Because the email address what will use for users should be a valid email format. So now here for username required is unique. Required valid email is unique. And here we have our required. 
and all the rules will be separated using a pipe symbol. Now after providing rules, go here, let's say if, this will call validate method. Look at IntelliSense, it is asking for rules, we need to pass rules here. I will pass not here, it means that if form validation rules fails, it means our data is somewhere means is coming with the empty value is not unique so when we get any error then if block gets executed so here let's define a response variable inside this array let's say status equals to false message let's say user data or instead of a static message let's receive message from application so this validator and i will call get errors method so this line of code actually going to return our application errors now next let's data and this will be an empty array so successfully now we have completed our if block here so go inside this else block successfully it means data has passed all about validation rules so the next step was that we need to use or make use of user model and entity so here we need to create a user model object so let's say user object equals to new and this will be user model this model is coming from our silt authentication package now next we need to define let's here i will define a comment that is user model and in the next line i will define user entity entity is also a class so here let's say user entity object new and it will be user entity And I think that inside SIL, user entity is only user and it is giving some errors. So first we go at the top of this class and let's say use user. Now as we can see that it's an entity and it is also coming from our SIL package. So go here, error has gone. Now let's prepare our data set. It means to save our user. So user entity object or instead of preparing a data set into a different line let's define right here inside the construct of this user entity class so here let's say username username the value will be coming from this request get where and we will pass our username value right here inside this username key now next we will have our email address so this request using gateware method will pass email address value and finally we'll have for the password so password this request will use gateware method and right after this gateware method we need to pass password so these are the columns of our table called username, email and password because these are the mappings by the help of that these values which comes in API call body to map with these columns and will save inside our database table. So finally here we have our rules, validation process, here we have our user model object and user entity object and finally we need to save this data inside our database so we will call user model object and we will call a save method and inside save method we need to pass user entity object so finally we have done all the steps so let's return a response here so return all its response equals to status equals to true message let's say user data or let's say user saved successfully and finally data will be an empty array so finally here we have our if block ready and else block ready so after this if block and else block let's return our response so return this 
I will call respond created and let's pass this response variable. So successfully, now we have completed all about this register API method. Now this time we will test that this method is working fine or not. Go back to our postman tool and before that let's start our development server. Development server started. So I will copy this URL, copy link back to postman, open a new tab, pasting it here. This is our application URL. So after this URL, also we need that as API as a prefix, let's open all about our routes.php file. So I will go inside this config folder, let's open routes.php. So while calling any API method, we need to pass API as a prefix. So after application URL, let's pass API and then we need to call register method because this is the route we have registered here and we will hit using post request type. So from this request drop down, we need to select post request type. Now next we need to pass our form data like username, email and, pa email and password. So go inside body, form data. So inside this key, let's say username that will be our first key and the next key we want that is email address so it will be email and password let's pass the values so i will pass let's say our first username as vikas email address is something vikas at the gmail.com and password is let's say from 1 to 6. So finally, we have all these values inside each of the field. We are hitting our register method with API prefix by using post request type. Click on send button. And as we can see, user saved successfully. Let's go back to our database tables. So I will open and one more thing as we can see inside users table now we have one entry here. Inside auth identities we have one more entry here. Let's open users table into a new tab. Open auth identities. And as we can see that inside this table we have an entry of user inside secret. We are getting our email address. Go inside users table. And here as you can see we are getting our rest of the data. So finally, as we can see our register method is working and by the help of that method we have created our first user into our database table. So what will happen if we pass the same data to create another user? Let's create send button again. And now as we can see that this time the error message saying that the user field must contain a unique value and the email field must contain a unique value. So if we want to create one more user, we need to pass another set of data. So let's say that this is another set of data called Ashish. Ashish at gmail.com password is from 1 to 6. Click on send button. User saved successfully. If I go inside auth identities, reload this table. Now we can see that here we have our inside secret key, the email address value, inside secret too, here we have the password value. And by default, the Silt authentication package also takes care about the password. So as we can see, we have filled the value as the plain text from 1 to 6, but inside database table, we are saying as an encrypted value. Inside this users table, inside username, we'll get our username value. So successfully, by the help of this video, now we have created our first API and that is Register API. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.